that I was extremely busy to do my daily job. I did not have time to contemplate my situation and the future. So I, I was a bit too busy to consider a lot when I was young. Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk. But to win big, you've got to reduce it. My name is Andrew Stotz from A. Stotz Investment Research, and I'm here with featured guest Yoshimasa Sato. Yoshimasa, or I will call you Yoshi. Are you ready to rock? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, Yoshi is a CFA charter holder, and since October this year, he is the new APAC product strategist and solution specialist, vice president at eVestment. He has been in charge of portfolio management, multi asset investment strategy, and asset allocation model development throughout his career. Previously, he served as a portfolio manager of quantitative investment strategies at Goldman Sachs Asset Management and other companies. He started his career at Nomura Research Institute, where he led Nomura Securities Equity Trading Technology Team. Yoshi is a member of CFA Society Japan, and he holds a bachelor's and a master's degree in engineering from the University of Tsukuba. Yoshi, take a minute. Fill in any further tidbits about your life. Well, uh, I think you have already covered almost everything. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Well, congratulations, by the way, on the new job. It sounds like it's going to be interesting. Before this podcast, we talked a little bit about what you're doing, and uh, I think you're going to have fun at e-vestment. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Yep. Now, it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it and then tell us your story. I have been making an every effort to work in a global context by combining knowledge, skills, and experience in portfolio management and information technology. I might not be a typical Japanese in the sense the vast majority of people here is domestically oriented. Japan is a great country, and I do love it. However, the laboratory aging population and low birth rates of Japan pose a big problem for us. And tonight, I would like to talk about our time investment, not our investment in financial product. Everyone has 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I believe the time is our most valuable resource resource. And that is the key. Time is the key. In fact, when you look at time, one of the things I thought about when you mentioned that is that we always say we have 24 hours and seven days a week. But when you think about it from a working perspective, we may only have 40 hours a week. And if you really think about it from a working perspective, how much time are we really concentrating on our work? Our brains have a limit. There's only so much we can do. Maybe that's four hours a day. So really, if you look at it, you can think about it from a work perspective that we really have a very, very scarce, valuable, and precious resource like you've just said. All right. So tell us a little bit about your thinking in relation to this. In my early career, the, I had to narrow view of things. I started my career at an um, investment bank, and I was extremely busy to do my daily job there. And, you know, I did not have time to contemplate my situation and the future. So I, I was a bit too busy to consider a lot when I was young. I somehow figured out that I would like to pursue a career in the asset management industry, combining my own strengths and weakness, and also opportunities and threats out there. So what is, how did you get into the asset management 
industry. Was that a difficult thing to do or was it pretty easy at the time? Well, honestly, it was tough for me. Uh, I started my career at um, Japanese biggest investment bank, Commuter, as an equity trading technology guy. So it's, I, um, I was not the part of the asset management industry. But uh, throughout my career there, I had a chance to talk with portfolio managers. So I, w- and I was impressed by their deep knowledge and experience. Mm-hmm. So that's why I tried to pursue my career in the asset management industry. But once again, a big shift from sell-side technology to buy-side portfolio management. So mm-hmm. now I somehow found my way to there. Great. So why don't you tell us what you learned from this experience? Simply speaking, all I can say for younger listeners is first, know what you really like to do. And second, focus your own strengths. And these two should match. And ideally, these two should match what you really like to do and your own strengths would be ideally uh, matched. And finally, uh, pass two your own career in a sustainable manner. Short term is, is really bad, not only for financial investment, but also for time investment, time investment in your career. Furthermore, there is no such thing as a perfect career for everyone. It's not like a perfect answer in a written test, right? You have to find your own career path. I would like everybody to find the best one for him or her and live their own best life. Well, that's a lot of lessons. And I want to summarize some of the things that I took away from that. The first thing about that reminds me of a story. I'm going to tell you a story of a time that I was having coffee with my sister, Sharon, in Maine. She lives in Maine in the U.S. And we were sitting at a coffee shop near her house and we looked up to the wall and you said, you see that painting on the wall? And I said, yes. And she said to me, I painted that. Well, it kind of shocked me that her painting was in this coffee shop. So I asked her, why is it here? And she said, well, I was selling some of my paintings and this shop bought this painting for $200. And I said to my sister, why don't you do that? for a living as a career, paint and sell your paintings. And she said to me, I don't like to paint. (laughs) That kind of shocked me. And it made me realize that the important thing is obviously we want to do what we're good at. We want to do, but most importantly, we want to do what we like, what we enjoy. And I really took a lesson from that, from my sister, that to keep always be looking for the things that I enjoy at work and in life and try to pursue those. Not from an extent that, you know, I always going to be happy, but I would much rather be doing something that I enjoy rather than just trying to make money at something that I didn't enjoy. So I think that's one lesson that I take away from what you've said. A second thing that I take away from it is to focus on your future. It's like driving a car. Right. When you're driving a car, you've got to look down, but you've also got to look up. You can't just focus on what's right in front of you or eventually you'll crash. And so I think you remind me of the idea that you should always be writing down plans. And uh, on my computer that I'm on right now, I can go into my personal subdirectory and in it will be plans that I've written for my life over 20 or 30 years since I was in university. So take time to focus on future. And the third thing that I take away is what you also mentioned about long-term. The thing in life is that, and you mentioned the word short-term-ism. And some people say, well, companies are too short-term focused. Now, the good news is that if companies are short-term focused, that gives a great opportunity for those companies that are long-term focused. So don't be afraid in your life 
to take a long-term view, whether it's your personal life or in your professional life. It's not always going to be popular, but I can tell you that over time, you can win. And I can give a good example of this. A year and a half ago, my mother, who lives with me, was starting to play ping pong, and I was having her practice little by little. But what's amazing is that today, as I sit here talking to you, in the other room, I can hear the ping pong table going with the little robot that we have for the ping pong table. And my mom's speed and skill and agility is amazing. We would have never thought that we would have been there, but by focusing on the long term, but taking the short term steps to practice, we got there. And the fourth and final thing that I take away that you also mentioned is to follow your own path. And it reminds me in Thailand, we are mainly a Buddhist country. And one of the things that the Buddha is said to have said was, there are many paths to enlightenment. Find your own path. And that is what I take away. Is there anything you would add to that? Um, no. I, actually, I think you just covered everything I really wanted to say. Better than me. <laughs> Thank you so much for your laptop, Andrew. And I really like your family story as well. Yeah. So much we can, we can share in our families. So let's move on to the next thing, which is based on what you've learned from this story and what you continue to learn, what one action would you recommend our listeners, particularly those young listeners who are really busy like you and I were in the beginning? What advice would you give them to avoid suffering the same fate? Right. It's a tough, but a great question, Andrew. In financial investments, you might have time on your side. Uh, that leads, and generally, and simply speaking, the longer time horizon you have, the more risk you can take. But it's a bit different story in time investments, and time investments in our lives. We only have limited time in our lives. We have to choose what we do and what we don't do. Uh, sadly, we have to die eventually, and it's very important for us to make the most out of our life and to leave something great behind us. That's so true and so beautiful to think about. We got to focus on the time that we have right now, and it is limited. All right. Well, there you have it, listeners. Another story of loss to keep you winning. To find more stories like this, previous episodes, and resources to help you reduce your risk, visit myworstinvestmentever.com. As we wrap up, Yoshi, thank you again for coming on the show. I know it's painful talking about our losers, but our listeners are learning to win as a result. Do you have any parting words for our listeners? And who? It's especially nice of you to give me this great, precious opportunity. I do hope our listeners get something out of my story. Once again, thank you so much. I am sure that they will get something out of that. Well, that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our wealth. And what we learned today is protect our happiness too. Fellow risk takers, I'll see you on the upside.